Welcome to Stronger Schools. I'm your host, Matt Miller, Director of Education Leadership at Final Sight. And with us today is our special guest, Glenn Robbins, Brigantine Community School Superintendent. Glenn, thank you for being a guest on the podcast. Oh, thank you and honored to be here. Can you, uh, Glenn, I feel like, um, you know, when I was thinking about talking to you, and first of all, I really appreciate you saying yes. Um, and when I thought about, you know, guests I want to have, I almost felt like I had to add uh, the Glenn Robbins to sort of the <laughs> reach out to you because you have such a huge positive influence and message that you put out to people every day. I feel like um, I feel like people that are going to be watching this already know of you, but they don't know you already. And I can't imagine there's many that don't. And so I guess let me just start right into it is. How do you how do you manage that that communication piece and that messaging from your role as superintendent? Well, I think that's the key role anymore as a superintendent, right? You are the chief communicator. You tell the story. And I, we've we've heard this a billion times in different iterations. Uh, but for me, it is, you know, I'm trying to keep the morale up for our staff, our kids, our community and anybody and everybody in this uh, great field of education. So anything I can do to make the world better. I would love to share and keep doing that. I love how you talked about morale. Um, you know, people want to use maybe the term sometimes cheerleading. I don't know if that's it. Um, you do a really good job. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, I've got you on the pack podcast. I don't need to say anything to butter you up. But I think you do a really good job at amplifying what is going on in your in Brigantine and your district and just your leadership message. So I'm going to delve into that a little bit um, in a few minutes, but let me go back to your district. Tell us uh, for the viewers and listeners about Brigantine Community Schools, about your location, demographics, where you're at and how long you've been there. Just sort of the the, the setup of, of where you're at. Yeah, no problem. So Brigantine, New Jersey is located right next to Atlantic City. So I am on a barrier island, uh, three blocks away from the ocean. It's uh, not a rough view at all, to be very honest with you. Also, two blocks from the golf course for anybody that likes to play uh, 18 holes. Um, so I'm very, very blessed to be in this amazing shore community. Um those of you who are familiar with Brigantine or not, Brigantine has gone a lot of changes um, from Hurricane Sandy hitting here through the recessions, through uh, COVID, through uh, the housing market and so forth. So I started here in February 2020, and a month later, the world turned upside down. Um, so in COVID years, I guess you could say it's like 18 years I've been here, but technically it's gone three going on four. Um, so our building has changed a lot. We were two buildings. Now we're down to one. Um, so then we had to take two schools and merge them into one type of staff, one type of student body. Um, and then also being mindful that we've lost a lot of population as well. So we are a much smaller school district. The building years ago had close to 1800. Now we're only down to 400. Uh, and that has to do a lot with our local economy and where we are. We are um, right next to Atlantic City, like I mentioned. We're about an hour um, southeast of Philadelphia and about two hours south of New York. So a lot of changes have happened. Uh, Demographics-wise, before the pandemic, we were roughly about 65 70% free and reduced lunch. Uh, now, post-pandemic, past housing market, uh, we're roughly about 35%. So a lot of changes in the short time. Wow. And um, I'm kind of curious. I guess I didn't know that you started in February of that year. So what was the sort of the impetus behind that and the, the shift sort of like mid school year? Yeah. So it's I know some states, they do it like a year out ahead of time. So uh, in this particular position uh, in New Jersey, you can have an interim superintendency uh, where a retired person can come back out there. Their contract was up in February. Gotcha. Uh, two years. So for that, it was, you know, it was posted. I got the job in November, but it couldn't start till February. Yeah. I, um, uh, Chuck, Chuck Sampson. I know probably you know Chuck. Chuck's in that similar situation also in New Jersey as well, where he's leading one district and I think pretty much right now, uh, transitioning to the next. So that's right. That's, uh, must be something, uh, that, uh, on the East Coast happens more and more. Um, uh, but I do hear about that. So that's interesting. And then, yeah, like you said, a month later, the world falls apart and you got to manage people who don't know you ha really because you've only been there, you know, a short time. I know you ingrained yourself really well in the situations and into your district. But, man, 
you got to make some big sweeping decisions that are impacting not just school, but, you know, the health and well-being of kids and staff. And so um, how hard was that? You know, I'm not going to lie. It wasn't easy. Um, you know, you're a new person. I didn't really know anybody coming into the community. Um, but something that really helped me out, I just finished at that time, General Stanley McChrystal's Team of Teams book. Yes. Um, read that and read that and sat down with my security officer at the time who was a retired police chief. And we talked about, you know, what does this look like going forward? Like, it was just three weeks to reduce the curve, you know, flatten the curve. And we basically came to the conclusion we need to have a meeting and we need to bring on all the major players from across the community. And we did that. And we we brought everybody into the old cafeteria, uh, whether it was public works or fire, police, uh, teachers, uh, food services, OEM, um, as council, mayor, you name it. And uh, my first meeting with all of them was, hey, my name's Glenn. I'm the superintendent. I checked my ego at the door. Nice. I don't know. What's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen in this world for as far as like we're next to the casinos. When they close, we always leave the country in, in foreclosed homes and unemployment. So wow. what's going to happen with the mental health of the families and so forth? So, you know, we built that really great relationship right away. Um, so we were in constant communication, phone calls, at least weekly, Zoom calls and so forth. And that had set the stage for what was to come. I got to meet my staff by actually picking up the phone and just having normal conversations with them saying, hey, how, I know you're teaching. I know you're doing it on Zoom, but how are you? Tell me yeah. about you. Tell me about your family. Because uh, we had a lot of time. No one was going anywhere, right? So uh, we really used the best of that. And then um, I really wanted to help transform the district and amplify and get them involved more by giving them some really good few days. So I went out and every week I had a different keynote speaker and speak for 30 minutes about the heart cycles, replenished our heart, souls, and minds of our re-educator so they could go back out. Um, and I had a lot of our friends that you and I both know that just came on because once again, they were stuck at home and yep. they came in and that made it really it personalized to a human level. And I know we always talk about what's the number one thing in our school district. It's human capital. And I think we get away from that sometimes, but we really pushed hard on that. And, you know, I remember working with our IT department. We quickly went one to one. We quickly updated everything and anything that usually takes two, three, four years. And we got way ahead of the curve before all the chain supplies and so forth. So I utilized that, that chaos as an opportunity and utilized that opportunity to get to know all these key players on the island in this community. So now, when a, when a situation do arise, I can only do a couple of quick text messages, and everybody has the same message in the community working together as one. And that's the best part about this community. They all check that ego at the door. They all want the best for their kids and for this town. I think uh, I think we need to title this episode "Chaos is an Opportunity" because that was <laughs> a, that's a great line. And um, I think you you and I were on some of those zooms together when this whole thing went down back then. And I really don't want to like. And I asked the question about the COVID piece and like so many times we go to you know different sessions and leadership trainings and things where people want to talk about that. I think there are lessons learned from that as we look forward. But um, your situation was just so unique with coming in a month before everything hits with COVID and you led them through that. And I'm sure maybe at the time there were some staff members saying, oh, my gosh, there's all this change. Chaos, if you want. And uh, we have this new guy here and now we're going into a pandemic. And so. I bet there are people in your uh, on your staff in your community who said that if we had to go through that, I'm glad it was Glenn that let us, let us out because you did check the egos at the door. You did do your homework in terms of other districts on the West Coast that started having to deal with things before you know things came west or came east, uh, Midwest, and then certainly to the east. And so I think that that helps get get through that. And I'm sure that they really appreciate the coming out on the other side. And sort of the lessons learned from that from that chaos, as you said. So um, that's really good to hear. And there's leadership lessons in that. Can you let's go back and shift a little bit? Can you talk about your career path in education a little bit for yeah. us? Yeah, good, no. good year, so I started out as a history teacher at high school. Uh, I taught for roughly about four years. Uh, during that four years, I got my master's in administration and uh started jumping into that. So I also at that time was also a varsity soccer coach. Uh, did that for a couple of years. And then I got the opportunity, which I didn't expect. Uh, the vice principal position opened up and they asked if I would want that. And I quickly jumped into that. And so I started at 27 years old as a vice principal. 
And then, you know, <laughs> five years later, I'm a principal yep. over at another school, which I had four awesome years there uh, with a lot of different great accolades from that staff. Then went over to being a uh, superintendent for four years at another district in Central Jersey. And then from there, Brigantine opened up and it was an opportunity for me to get back to uh, where I've been for the majority of my career, which is in Atlanta County by the ocean. And I'm not going to lie, that salt life is real. That salt life is uh, is wonderful when it hits the lungs. And, uh, you know, I love the people over here and it was a way to go back home in a way. So I'm excited where I am in Brigantine. I've been here uh, be four years coming up in uh, February. So eight years as superintendent, five, four and a half-ish with the principal and uh, five and a half with the uh, VP. I don't, I don't want to do any math right now, but, but you <laughs> still have a lot of years ahead of you, which yeah. is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm uh, a younger guy and I, um, I've been told by my wife, I'm not allowed to retire ever. So <laughs> I have young children as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of like, uh, you're in a good spot because you love the work that you do. You're very effective at it and you also love where you live and it's back home. I mean, you're kind of hitting the trifecta there. So, um, that's awesome. That's good to hear. Um, I want to kind of go into now a little bit about your social media presence and things online. And so um, I don't want to give my perspective yet. I just kind of want to hear from you sort of how you got started doing that, the content you push out, um, the the places that you reach and things like that. Um, can you kind of delve into that a little bit and how you got started and and how you sort of manage that now? Yeah. So years ago, I just remember seeing a couple of celebrities talking about Twitter and I was like, you know what, I'll jump on there. I'm a big sports fan. So I was like, you know, let's see the scores before they're posted on ESPN and let's see if anybody's getting transferred. And then my wife and I didn't have kids at the time. So we're like, all right, maybe we can find some travel deals on there. And then, you know, I started, started finding like-minded people like you and many others on there, George Sat Chat and many other different chats that came along. And then, you know, I started blogging, putting that out there and it just kept evolving, just like anything else in life and a profession. And, um, and here I am today. So, um, now I try to do a lot of like positive quotes or stoic quotes and so forth, um, that kind of resonate with any leader or any educator going through life right now. Uh, let's be honest, life is a lot different than it was three years ago, pre COVID to COVID to, Societal aspects have changed, the uh, attitudes have changed, the uh, patience levels have changed. So I try to look at it from that lens for where I am right now and trying to lift up others. And I'm not just post, like when I post, it's not about anybody and it's not about like my general feelings that day. Like sometimes I'll get a text, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm great. Why? Oh, we saw your, your Twitter feed. I yep. was like, no, I'm just putting it out there. This is something that resonated with me from my readings and so forth. So, um, like I said, just trying to spread that the positive message. I think um, part of what I like about what you do is you do you find that really good balance between what's going on in your schools and in the leadership side of things. As I mentioned at the at the top of this podcast, you have this knack of sort of balancing that out. Where you know sometimes you see uh, men or women go you know way way in on the school stuff or way in on the personal stuff or the leadership side, but you've been able to navigate that pretty well. I'm going to assume. Um, all your social media accounts are all yours, right? You're not, it's not a team. It's an army of one, correct? Yes. Yeah, so when you have a small district, I don't have a PR firm. It's Glenn Robbins LLC right here. So uh, that's, that's my good. PR firm. <laughs> good. Um, in case uh, the, there there are one or two people who are watching who aren't following you on all the socials, how can they find you? Yeah. So you can go on uh, X or Twitter at Glenn, G-L-E-N-N-G Robbins, R-O-B-B-I-N-S. Uh, same thing for Instagram, same thing for Facebook, and also on YouTube. So, And also, uh, where I probably see most of your content, especially the last few months, is on LinkedIn. I think you have a really good oh, LinkedIn. I forgot about that, yeah. Yeah, you have a really good LinkedIn presence, and yours is always one that pops up for me every day. And um, you do put things out there that I think help leaders, whether it's in education or anything else. And so... Um, that's, that's pretty impressive, uh, as a leader for all of us out there, even though you mentioned how young you are and you have a long, uh, long road to hoe in front of you, you do already have that sort of social capital in a positive way. And I know that I appreciate that and many others in the business do too. Um, do you have your own comms team in your district or is it you? You're looking at it. So what we did during the COVID was I released a lot of ownership 
And, you know, for our comms team in, in the district, the staff jumps in a lot. So we don't use Slack. We use Dojo and they're constantly putting everything out for the families. Uh, we just updated our app and so forth. So that way we're communicating with our families. But I gave a lot of leeway to our, our best ambassadors, our students and our, our teachers. You know, they spread the message really well. They put things out there. Uh, we do work with the local paper and share that out there as well. Uh, but for the most part, a lot of the PR goes through me and, um, listen, I'm proud of the work the kids are doing. And I want people to realize how great educators are, especially in Brigantine. And I want them to see the great work that we're, our kids are doing each and every day. Um, and, and that was something I was proud of, Matt. Like when the world started to reopen up, we were probably the only school in the region, if not the state that had a regular schedule every day. You know, we didn't have a crazy wacky schedule. We made it work based on our size and our building and so forth that we had. So I'm not naive there. But we found a way to make it really work. And I'm thankful because when we talk about these learning loss and so forth, our kids are now performing better than ever. You know, for the first time in 20 years, we just got designated as a high performing district. Congratulations. And this, this past year, we've also had our test scores going up. Now, was I aiming to raise test scores? No, I was building culture, celebrating great things, building relationships, creating spaces and doing all these great things for the kids. That came along with it. Yeah. Isn't that interesting how those are connected? Right. Yeah. And so yeah. it's all about driving towards test, raising test scores. It's, you know, you got to take care of a lot of things. And if you have a lot of good things going, sometimes those things, a lot of times those things take care of themselves. Yeah. Kudos to you, man. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the groups that you're in, in terms of leadership where you, where you get fed. Uh, seems like you do a lot of that in the district, but what about you and groups and organizations that you're a part of and how do you, how, how does that help you? It's, Tremendous to me. Uh, you know, when I got on Twitter, like I mentioned earlier, once I started finding commonalities between people and seeing different things, that helped me so much. They realized there were other like-minded people like out there that I could have conversations with. And then it evolved, obviously. And then COVID, like you said, you know, we were on a bunch of calls together uh, with a large group through AASA, through COSIN, uh, through so many different fields, um, just people that wanted to have conversations that – that has been a saving grace to me, whether it was as a therapy session or whether it was a strategic planning session, whether it was professional development moving forward. Uh, those groups fill me up all the time. And I can't be more grateful and more thankful for what they've done for my career. Um, you know, you're a big part of it, too, watching what you did throughout your career, trying to model after some of those ideas that you put into your classrooms and buildings. Uh, I don't think, like I said, I don't think people realize the impact that they have on others. And, you know, when you have those conversations and go, oh, my goodness, this is going on in Ohio. Oh, my goodness, this is this is also going on in California. I feel a little better now. Like, you know, I could breathe. And it was also like, hey, you know, how did you work with your board to get this, you know, initiative passed? How did you work with your community to get that passed? You know, to have those true meaningful conversations, that's what I took away most from ASA and COSIN, um, you know, and so many other groups that we were a part of. Because it was real. Yeah. You know, I can read a bunch of different books and I can go to a bunch of different professional developments, but they can't tell me how to work with a board. They can't tell me how to work with a association or a union. They can't tell me how to work with certain parents. So that's what I appreciated most from those groups is the commonality of working together. So we all had a lot of scars, but we also have a lot of stars and accolades after that, you know, so – um, and it makes me smile because I look at it today like, hey, this, you threw everything at us and that's the best you got. Like, we're still here. <laughs> you're, still, you're still smiling. That's yeah. great. And then did you just host an AASA visit? Yes, we did. So I was thankful for that. Um, we just hosted the uh, Transformational Leadership Consortium. We had 65 people, 11 different states. Um, beyond blessed that we got asked to have that conversation and bring them out to here. Uh, worked with my chamber of commerce. We, instead of putting them up at hotels in Lake City, we put them up in the mega mansions at a really cheap discounted rate at the Jersey Shore, you know, to do a true Jersey Shore thing. Uh, right. so they slept in Brigantine. They ate very, very well in Brigantine. Uh, they learned in Brigantine. And then I also teamed up with a local school off the island for Atlantic County Institute of Technology. So, um, what a great visit and what a great thing for my staff. What a great thing for the community and for the kids. They were so excited. And Matt, you'll appreciate this. You've been on a bunch of different tours before, and sometimes it is so large you can't hear what's going on all the way in the back. We broke it down. This is one of my, my teacher's ideas. We took two kids for every two to three adults. 
And that was it. That was your tour. So we had a lot of tour guides, That's but awesome. we had them walking through and the kids were personalized and nothing was scripted. And wow. every person came back saying the kids felt that they had so much ownership and investment into the school. Like they helped pick the different changes of furniture. They helped pick the paint colors. They helped pick all these different initiatives that were moving forward with classes and so forth. They were really excited about that. And I was happy to have that true conversation instead of the uh, traditional tour that you normally get with all the highlighted bulletin points. points. So, I, can see you, I can see the glow in you, seriously, talking about it and how proud of, of, of your students and of your staff that, that, that you have to be. And, um, you know, those are those are heavy lifts when you're hosting people. You're glad to do it and you're glad to show off a little bit. That's maybe not the right word, but, you know, glad to let other people see what your kids and what your district is doing. But, man, you're also glad when they leave. Right. Just to, <laughs> the just to sort of like catch your breath a little bit. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Like, for, the, for about a day. Yeah. And then it's back. On. It's like a championship winning football coach. You win the Super Bowl and then you take a day and then the next day you're back at it. But you're back yeah. at it. that's right. You got to You got to build back up. OK. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you maybe a difficult question. Maybe not. We'll see. Um, OK. So you have a lot of road ahead of you. And so what do you see yourself doing or a- aspiring to be? But you're not allowed to say, uh, I want to be the superintendent of Brigantine Community Schools for the rest of my career. We all get that. But if you couldn't do that, what would you like to do? That's a great. You know, you stole my answer. Oh, so there's Jesus. Wow. When does this happen? Yeah. So obviously, I, I think it's giving back, you know, continue to present keynote, help out the different districts across the country. Uh, I do have a book coming out soon. So I'm excited about that. Maybe we'll have more coming out. I did not know that. Tell us about that. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. So uh, myself and Danny Bauer, if you follow him at all yeah. online, he has a really popular podcast and a couple of books out. And it's going to be on historic leadership for educators. So it's common to chaos. So we're uh, hopefully we'll get that published in December. I think we're looking at right now. So we're going through the editing and the copywriting right now. And we're excited about that. So um all timeless information that can be timeless things that have not changed. People's emotions will never change. You know, different things that go on at board meetings will never change. Different parents will never change. So it's all practical stuff and conversational pieces. And then if I really could in a perfect world, I stay home and raise my kids, man, and just be home with them and enjoying the family life. But that's not going to happen. So I, like I said, I enjoy speaking and giving back and working with other schools and whatever I can do to make the lives of children better. That's awesome. Uh, well said. All right. So for the lighter portion of the questions, and so I know that you're a sports guy. You've got your Philly shirt on right there. Um, that does not go unnoticed. Eagles fan, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Kelly uh, Green right coming up. Yep. <laughs> that, all right. Well, you're, you're a Jersey boy, right? Yes. So how many times have you seen Springsteen, who is my absolute favorite? I'm just going to throw that out there. Go. I was supposed to, and then he got sick. So it would have been my first time over the summer, and I ended up canceling until next year. So Jersey guy, it would have been your first time? Oh, Glenn, all right. That's okay. All right. Uh, following up with that, and uh, there are no wrong answers to this part, uh, so hopefully you get better. Uh, very first album record CD you bought with your own money. We need some theme music in the background. Uh, it was either Black Crows oh. or... Metallica's black. Okay. Oh, so early, the- early 90s. Early 90s then, right? Yeah. Pretty sure. Wow. Nice. Does both uh have stood up the test of time? All right. And then first concert you ever went to. George Thorogood opened up and ZZ Top finished. Wow. You know Great. what? Those uh yeah. you nailed those two questions because both of those things, those are those are good. No, no shame in either one of those answers. Yeah, I tried to raise the bar. I sent my son to his first ever concert over the summer and took him to see Metallica. So 80,000 screaming people up in the Meadowlands. Uh, I looked at him. I'm sorry, buddy. I, I set the bar high for you. Good luck with the rest of your concert career. <laughs> how, how, old is, how old was he at the time of concert? He's sixth grade. He's 11 years old. All right. Perfect. Uh, That's a good time. That's a good time. All right, Glenn. Uh, we're going to let you go. Um, I cannot thank you enough on behalf of Final Sight and on behalf of the Stronger Schools podcast, the superintendent edition, for giving us a little bit of your time. Can you tell us again the name of the book that will be coming out? Yeah, it's going to be called Calm in Chaos, um, you know, an educator's guide to uh, stoic leadership. Awesome. All right. Uh, thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. And I will 
hopefully see you soon. Thanks, Matt. All right. Take care.